So SCAD is defined as a non-traumatic, non-iatrogenic, and non-atherosclerotic uh, causes of spontaneous separation of the coronary artery wall. And what happens is then you have created a false lumen from intramural hemorrhage uh, into the false lumen that then compress the true lumen and that can cause myocardial ischemia or an infarction. We've been able to identify in the past few years from series, from consecutive series, that um, one of the key primary risk factors is fibromuscular dysplasia or FMD. And in fact, in our previous study, we've shown that FMD coexists in patients with SCAD in about 60 to 80% of cases. And so it's a very important and dominant risk factor. In our current study, we found 31% were diagnosed with FMD, but in about 45% of cases, there have been incomplete screening of FMD still. Um, therefore, this explains why our prevalence in this study currently is lower than what we previously reported. But with further screening, we would likely find a greater proportion of patients with this prevalence uh, with, of FMD. In terms of other risk factors, um, they are less common, but that includes patients with systemic inflammatory disease, uh, inherited connective tissue disorders, peripartum, um, active use of hormonal therapy, for instance. So those are important risk factors. Uh, one of our other findings is that precipitating stressors are actually very common. In fact, 66% of patients reported either significant emotional stress uh, or physical stress. In fact, significant emotional stress was reported in 50% of our patient cohort, and significant physical stress was reported in about 29% of our cohort, including 10% who reported aggressive, intense isometric isometric stressor, lifting more than 50 pounds. So these are important uh, triggers for a SCAD, um, especially if your arteries are frail to begin with and prone to tear. That is a good question. Um, I don't think um, a lot of the medical community um, uh, are familiar with that. For in terms of uh, the cardiology community, you know, there is increasing recognition of the term uh, but I think if you ask a respirologist, for instance, that is not going to be well recognized. So SCAD is a relatively infrequent condition that has been poorly understood for many decades, and it remains underdiagnosed and um, misdiagnosed and not understood. Well, there are a lot of early myths, and therefore, um, you know, studies need to be conducted to better understand this condition. So the Canadian SCAD cohort study is a large prospective observational multi-center natural history study where we enrolled 715 non-atherosclerotic SCAD patients. Um, the primary objective of our study is to assess the in-hospital and long-term cardiovascular outcomes of this condition. And uh, their secondary objectives include um, elucidating detailed clinical characteristics of this condition, including the angiographic characteristics. We found several important um, uh, factors. Number one, um, despite medical therapy or a conservative therapy being the predominant first-line treatment for these patients, in fact, in 86% of cases, patients were treated conservatively up front, uh, the in-hospital uh, and 30-day mortality was good. In fact, the uh, mortality was only 0.1% in hospital, and there was no further death out to 30 days. So despite conservative management up front without revascularization, the majority of patients survived. However, the 30-day composite of other cardiovascular complications, uh, such as recurrent MI, um, stroke and TIA, um, heart failure, um, and uh, recurrent uh, or unplanned revascularization was relatively high. That was 8.8%. Uh, signaling that in this patient population, uh, even after discharge from hospital, they should be closely monitored within 30 days. Another important part is the um, uh, outcomes associated with percutaneous coronary intervention. Uh, the success rate or partial success rate was about 70%. 30% uh, of cases uh, of patients who underwent PCI were deemed unsuccessful.
Uh, and that just highlights the challenges of doing coronary interventions in these patients. Uh, and therefore, uh, PCI should be limited to patients where there are high risk, high risk features, such as ongoing chest pain, um, ongoing ischemia, uh, or uh, hemodynamic compromise, you know, being in cardiogenic shock or cardiac arrest or left main dissection. Um, uh, those patients might then warrant a more aggressive approach with coronary intervention, but otherwise majority of patients should be treated conservatively based upon our findings. Another important finding um, is that patients with peripartum SCAD and also connective tissue disorders, these were independent predictors of 30-day MACE events. And uh, therefore also highlighting that in, this, in these particular patient cohorts, uh, they should be very closely monitored as well after their initial presentation. Um, in particular, we found that patients with peripartum SCAD, they had higher risk presentation, and that included mortality, cardiac arrest, um, uh, cardiogenic shock, uh, EF less than 35%, and left main dissection. Uh, so peripartum SCAT was a predictor of high risk uh, in hospital events. Uh, and these patients should be closely monitored in hospital for probably additional number of days compared to standard patients. What we presented yesterday was some of the preliminary analyses on in-hospital and 30-day events. There are several other aspects of the study. We're continuing long-term follow-up for these patients. Uh, we're going to address other um, uh, characteristics such as, you know, Seattle anginal score uh, and recurrence of symptoms over the long term. Uh, we're going to look at laboratory results such as, you know, looking at inflammatory markers. Um, and also a very important aspect of looking at SCAT patients is to address the genetics aspects of, uh, of this condition as well. We do have an ongoing um, study that is funded to look at the genetics of these 750 SCAT patients uh, by a heart and stroke grant as well. So that's going to be a major, um, uh, you know, further studies in the, that we'll report in the future. Fortunately, you know, there are several other groups as well, aside from the Canadian group, who are looking at the population of SCAD patients, including the Mayo Clinic Registry, and the Europeans as well are trying to establish a multi-center type of uh, registry that includes retrospective patients as well as prospective patients. And so what we learned so far, as far as what we've you know, learned from our colleagues, say from the Mayo Clinic, a lot of times we've been able to validate our findings between different centers and different studies, which is really reassuring that we're you know, finding sort of similar um, uh, outcomes uh, and predisposing risk factors for these patients. Uh, as well, in the, in the future, hopefully we'll have collaboration between these different centers, especially when we require a larger cohort of patients when we look at the genetics of this patient population. So that, that will be really key.